All right, so this is our first quantitative bit. I'm going to introduce it now. We're going to come back to it tomorrow. And we're going to come back to it because I'm going to get you tomorrow to do some calculations. Um, it's a very good way of getting this stuff bedded in. Um, when folk were initially beginning to try and think up ways of sensibly quantifying numbers of atoms and their masses and all the rest of it, uh, the obvious, in fact the very sensible thing to do at that stage was to use the lightest, the least massive element in the periodic table as your measuring stick. So you take hydrogen, which we now know has one proton uh, in the nucleus, and that's it, mass number of one. It's an obvious ruler to use to measure everything else with. Right? So it's a very sensible thing to do. But of course, once people started discovering isotopes, then in fact there are isotopes of hydrogen that have a proton and a neutron, or a proton and two neutrons, so the mass number can actually be <coughs> one, two, or three, uh, that begins to fall over a little bit. Uh, so the next stage in this was to say, well, we need to pick one particular isotope as our measuring stick. And we could have done this then using hydrogen in its most common form. It's just one proton. Okay, but then we leave out of our... Um, thinking the fact that you know we most uh, most atoms and most elements there are a lot of neutrons in there as well so actually for all sorts of reasons of convenience <coughs> it was a particular isotope of carbon that was used as the measuring stick <coughs> and in particular it was carbon-12 right now carbon-12 Carbon has six protons in the nucleus. It's not shown on the screen, but it's the sixth element in the periodic table. <coughs> so the implication, therefore, is that there are six protons and six neutrons, equal numbers of each. So the measuring stick now is a twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 um, atom. All right, so essentially, our measuring stick is now the average mass of a proton and a neutron. That's what it effectively means. So if we went back to nitrogen then, which is one of the examples I had up on the previous screen when we were looking at the basic nomenclature of all this, um, a nitrogen atom has a mass number of 14, so an individual atom now has a mass that is 14 twelfths, 7 over 6, of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. All right? This is just the scale that we're now using. Now that's fine as far as it goes. That gives us a measure, measurement scale that will cover the entire periodic table. All we need to do is to say, you know, how massive is our particular atom, our particular isotope, compared to carbon-12. Carbon-12 is now our ruler for doing this, if you like. Um, if we want, however, to convert it to kilograms, then the only way of doing that is to know what the mass of a single carbon-12 atom is. All right? Now, this is where Avogadro's experiments on numbers <coughs> of atoms comes in. So he's got this very, very useful constant which you will be using so often it's going to be ingrained into your memory uh, if it's not there already. Um, in fact, there's going to be a lot of figures that I suggest you try and hang on to, at least in a ballpark fashion. Right? I'm not suggesting you remember pi to 26 decimal places, but remembering some ballpark figures is, is probably right. So if you remember Avogadro's number as being about 6 times 10 to the 23, that will get you out of a lot of holes. Um, certainly, in you know, for exam questions and so on, that constant will be given you. You won't be expected to memorise it, as I say, to many decimal places. But it's always worth, as we'll see when we start doing some numerical calculations, it's worth being able to do some ballpark sums 
um, in the margin, in your head, whatever, just to make sure you didn't push the wrong power of 10 button on your calculator, right? which is really, really common. I mean, I, you know, even in last summer's exam, I can remember one person who told me that the mass of an individual <coughs> atom that he or she was supposed to be calculating was, you know, goodness knows how many kilograms. Complete nonsense. You'd think it would ring alarm bells, but evidently in the panic of the exam hall it didn't. So, you know, getting some ballpark numbers in your head is actually a quite useful thing. So, here we are. Here's Avogadro's constant. Um, and uh, it's defined uh, as the number of atoms in, and here's this number 12 again, um, 0 0.012 kilogram, so in, in sort of pre-SI units this would have been 12 grams, 0 0.012 kilograms of carbon-12. So again, here is our definition of a, of a ruler. And we're going to do this often. <coughs> it's usually up to us what ruler we choose. Once we've defined a ruler, all we've got to do is use it consistently. And we'll be fine after that. We just need to know what it is we're doing um, at the start of it. So this number 6.023 times 10 to the 23 is the number of carbon-12 atoms in 0 0.012 of a kilogram of carbon-12. Right? It's just a number, just a measuring stick. Yeah? Um, and that's referred to as a mole. So a mole of any substance is whatever amount of that substance it takes to have L, Avogadro's number, of particles in it. All right? So it could be atoms, which is what we've just been talking about in terms of, of carbon-12. could be molecules. We could be talking about a mole of water molecules, which would be 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water which of course means we have three times 6.023 times 10 to the 23 atoms because we've got two hydrogen and one oxygen atom per water molecule. So a mole of unibuses would be 6.023 times 10 to the 23 buses. It's just a count of stuff. But it's really, really useful uh, in this context when we're trying to look at the number of atoms or the number of molecules of something. Right? But as I say, all it is is, is, is a, a, a nice, convenient way, a consistent way of measuring stuff. So, um, we can um, now work out on this basis, the mass of any one carbon-12 atom. Right? It's 0 0.012 kilograms, which is the mass of an Avogadro number's worth of these atoms. If we divide that by Avogadro's number, we get the mass of any one of them. And that comes out to be, as it shows on the screen, um, uh, 1.99 times 10 to the minus 26 kilogram. Now that's the carbon-12, remember. Carbon-12 has a mass number, as its name implies, of 12. So if you want now the mass of one mass unit, we divide that number by 12. So we divide 1.99 times 10 to the minus 26 by 12, and we get what's up there. 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. So that is the mass, now the average mass, if you like, of a neutron and a proton. They're actually very close to each other anyway. But this is our unit of mass now in the periodic table. So whatever the mass number of your element is, so if you're look, you can, um, looking at uranium-92, for instance, the mass of a single uranium-92 atom would be 92 times uh, that. Yeah? 
<coughs> and we can flip that on its head <coughs> now. Um, we can now say, well, look, let's not go from numbers of atoms to masses. Let's say we've got a certain mass of material, which is much more likely we've measured the mass of something. How many atoms are inside? And all we've got to do is turn the fraction up the other way. Right? We've gone from numbers of atoms to mass. Now we're going to go from mass to numbers of atoms. And that's all that's happening in this next bit at the bottom of the screen now. So if we take a kilogram of oxygen, uh, I'm going to assume oxygen atoms here, right, rather than oxygen molecules. It's got a ma mass number of 16. Yeah? So a kilogram of oxygen atoms will contain Avogadro's number divided by 0 0.016. So we get this number, 3.76 times 10 to the 25 oxygen atoms. Right, now for some of you, this is going to take a wee while to sink in. It's the reason why I'm going to bridge this between today and tomorrow. All right, so we'll come back tomorrow and do some calculations on this. But we can do this for molecules as well. So let's take our classic water molecule. If we've got a mole of water, it means we've got Avogadro's number worth of water molecules. We've got 6.023 times 10 to the 23 water molecules. Yeah? A water molecule has a mass number of 1 oxygen plus 2 hydrogens. 16 plus 1 plus 1. So the water molecule, the combined entity, has a mass number of um, 18. So the same thing applies, really. If we had a kilogram of water, we would have Avogadro's number divided now by 0 0.018. So in our kilogram of water, we have 3.35 times 10 to the 25 molecules of water. So in a standard can of Coke, for instance, you've got approximately 10 to the 25 molecules of water. I'll leave you to estimate how many molecules of water are in a given mouthful. It's an experiment you can do. All right, we're going to stop there. Tomorrow, I'll just give you an advanced look at the slide. We are going to do a couple of slides worth uh, of examples. And I'm going to give you some time to work through these, so you might want to do them between now and tomorrow. If not, I'm going to give you a few minutes at the start of the lecture to do them. And then I'll try and step through uh, on the blackboard, as it were, the same sort of stuff. So you get a feel for what we're producing. All right? Now, there are only two directions we can go, remember. We can either go through from a number of atoms or molecules to a mass, or we can go from a mass to a number of atoms or molecules. There are only two directions to this calculation. Now, there's going to be some wrinkles on it, as we'll see, but basically that is it. And we'll try and get some practice at this when we see each other tomorrow, okay?